Little Gem by the Princess Rarity Read by Goombasa I'm definitely going to spoil you rotten, even if your mother might be against it, Rarity murmured with a tired smile as she ran her hoof across her wife's abdomen, feeling the foal inside lightly kick. You're going to be the luckiest filly in Equestria, that's for sure. We're not a traditional family, but that's been overdone anyhow. Every pony will love you, from your eccentric aunts to the family friends, and most importantly, your mother and I. You're destined to be a hard worker, too. She hesitated and gave a low chuckle. Hopefully you'll find some time for the dress shop. No daughter of mine is going to spend all day with mud on her hooves. And you will definitely grow up to be beautiful, no makeup or other cosmetics needed. When you get older, all of the stallions and mares will be lining up around the block just to get a piece of you. She laughed. I'll do my best to keep your mother from shooting them. Rarity thought for a minute and noticed her snow-white hoof contrasting against Applejack's bold orange coat. You know what, sweetheart? She whispered to her unborn filly. You might have a family of two completely different backgrounds, but I can promise you this much. You see, your mother and I, we have very little similarities, but somehow we've managed to stay together in the relationship of ours for five years now. And when you're finally born, I know for a fact that your life will be the most wonderful mix ever. I have a feeling it could get chaotic, but you will love it. I thought I couldn't stick with it, but look at me now. I'm living in a simple farmhouse with the mayor of my dreams when I used to dream about having a castle with Prince Charming. Funny, isn't it? She noticed Applejack fidgeting in her sleep, and Rarity released a content sigh. Oh, all right, I think I've talked enough for one night, she said softly. But know this, darling. Even if you weren't planned, you couldn't have come at a better time in our lives. I can hear you, you know, Applejack tiredly muttered. You're talking her ear off, and she ain't even born yet. Rarity released a laugh as she felt her cheeks heat up with an embarrassed blush. Well, I can't help it, she playfully argued. Eleven months is a long time waiting, and we haven't even reached the halfway point. Can you blame me for being impatient? No, you're right about that one. But mind if I ask you a question? Applejack said with a raised brow. Of course not, Rarity replied. She adjusted her position on the bed and was now snuggling up against her wife, who was giving her a smile. What's on your mind, dearest? Releasing an uneasy breath, the earth pony nuzzled into Rarity's soft, warm, ivory coat, wrapping her hooves around her wife and hugging her. Rares, be honest with me. Are you scared? She muttered. Cause I am, but you're taking it all so well. I don't know the first thing about being a mother, and here you are acting like it's a walk in the park. I still can't believe how easy you're taking this. I mean, normally I'm the level-headed one. Blinking slowly, Rarity kissed her wife's forehead and ran a hoof through Applejack's silky blonde mane. I'm terrified, she declared in an unusually calm manner. You don't look it, was the only thing that could slip out of Applejack's mouth. I know, Rarity sighed. Apparently, I'm a better actress than I thought. She gave a half-hearted smile and she shook her head in disbelief. You have always been one of my top priorities, Applejack, if not the biggest, but now that... She swallowed and released a breathless laugh. We're going to have a daughter. Well, that just threw a wrench in the gears for me. I mean, think about it. One little slip-up after a romp in the sheets, you got pregnant. I didn't even know that unicorn magic was possible of doing such a thing, and that's on my own behalf. Now you're carrying a life that's a piece of both of us. In about six months, we're going to have a little girl in this room. No doubt she'll be perfect, but it's a baby. Our child. It wasn't that long ago when I couldn't even take care of my sister. And now I'm going to be a mother? Her voice cracked, and her lips stiffened. Silence echoed throughout the bedroom, only before Rarity let out another uneven breath as she pressed a soft kiss on her wife's lips. I mean, eighteen years... That seems like a long time, but time flies, and I don't want to end up driving my daughter down the wrong path, she muttered. Over the past five months, yes, I've been smiling and planning it all and treating you like a faithful wife should, 
but every one of my nerves are on edge. This isn't the first night I've spent wide awake worrying about our future when the two of us are going to be up all night with a crying baby or teaching her how to walk and talk. Heaven forbid when the years fly by and we have to fuss over how she's doing in school and what college she'll be going to. Rarity, I've said this before and I'll say it again. I want you to shut that pretty mouth of yours and listen to me, all right? Applejack interrupted as she directly looked at her wife, who immediately quieted down and gave a small nod. With a slight frown, Applejack gently patted down Rarity's slightly frizzy, straightened-out bedhead and kissed her cheek. I love you, and being married to you is better than any happy ending you used to dream about. I never even thought I would be lucky enough to land some pony like you, but look at us. How many amazing things have we done together? We saved the world, traveled all over Equestria in your crazy fashion business, and now we're living the simple life, about to start a family. We got the best of both worlds, and even though you drive me batter sometimes, I wouldn't trade a thing, she said. So what if we didn't plan this baby? And sure, it ain't gonna be easy taking care of her on account of the fact that she'll be beyond stubborn. She gave a smirk to her wife, who let out a scoff. You're worse than I am, she teased. Anyhow, that's not what worries me, Applejack continued, as the smile slowly faded. Watching our baby grow up? I don't mind that, it's part of life. Whatever we gotta deal with, we'll manage, like we always have. We can cross the bridges when we get down to that point in the path. Her expression now became emotionless, and she hesitated. I'm scared she might lose one of us. She noticed the look of confusion and terror on Rarity's face, and looked away shamefully. I know, I know it sounds crazy, but it plays out like a broken record in my family. It's been happening for generations now. Granny's mama just fell over one day, my pa's daddy got hurt in an accident, and I lost both my parents because they were reckless fools who didn't give a damn about us. That's as far as I can go without having to look at the records, and it scares me, you know. It's almost like a curse. She began shaking with every breath, and she choked back a sob. What if one day that happens to me, or you, and our little girl loses one, or both her mamas? She stammered. Rarity shook her head, wrapping her forelegs around her wife and cuddling her comfortingly. Oh dear, don't you dare think that, she whispered into Applejack's ear. Her voice was shaking with every word, and she swallowed down her emotions. Now you listen to me, Jacqueline. Not bothering to correct her wife on the usage of the full name, Applejack drifted her gaze up to look into Rarity's sparkling blue eyes that put every star in the night sky to shame. I might not be the most honest of ponies, but you know very well that I am a mare of my word, so you can believe me when I promise you that nothing will happen to our family. We will both be there for every precious moment our daughter has, and she will never lose us, nor will we lose her. Rarity said, her tone of voice serious and firm. I know that we're both scared, for different reasons, but I realize that what you've said was right. We can't worry. Hey now, I never said that, Applejack argued. Rarity gave a wave of her hoof. More or less, yes, you did. Or perhaps I'm summarizing it wrong, I don't know, she responded. Never mind that, what I do know is that we will have a happy life, the three of us. She gave a bittersweet smile and gently placed a hoof on her wife's stomach, feeling the unborn child slightly move around. No matter what comes down our path in life, so what I'd like to hear you say is that you believe me. Do you? Applejack released a breath and nodded. Course I do, she declared. So, let's take one step at a time, all right? Rarity whispered. I'm good with that. The earth pony smiled. The two mares kept their gaze locked and shared a sweet kiss, one that radiated many emotions. Happiness, bittersweetness, anxiety, and anticipation all in one. As they broke apart, Rarity took note of a single tear streaming down her wife's cheek. Applejack? Darling, is everything all right? She asked. The earth pony laughed and nodded, wiping it away. It's just that... This is all kind of emotional, and these darn hormones are kicking in, she muttered. Rarity couldn't hold back her smile. Only six months, she said simply. And with that said, the two mares bestowed identical grins, cuddling up next to each other and intertwining in their embraces. 
they fell asleep soundly for the first night in a long time, with not a single worry in their minds. For once, they were absolutely content. The future for them was undetermined, but love and hope was all they needed to have happiness. After all, if it had gotten them this far, then it would surely be a good compass for the rest of their adventure. The End <laughs>